crave beef? Eat more beef! Everybody, eat more beef! Eat more beef! Pay no attention to me, my brother's an only chick. Don't kid yourself. Unless you're a turkey, there's no better holiday than Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You will be my turkey all day today. Gobble, gobble. There's no doubt it's the best holiday. It's tops because of the food. Okay, I want you to eat your heart out, baby. And nothing goes with turkey and gizzard gravy like pig skin. Yeah, there you go. I mean, football is Thanksgiving. To me, it's second only to turkey. All right, we're smoking the turkey right now, baby. You got turkey, and then you got the National Football League. The two days that people are all football fans are, of course, Super Bowl Sunday and Thanksgiving Day. It's Americana. You can't do without Thanksgiving Day football. What else you want to be doing on Thanksgiving? Rather than eat turkey and hitting somebody in the mouth. <laughs> The buffer that you need when you're at Thanksgiving is that NFL game because you, you got a bunch of relatives you haven't seen in a while. And you're going to be tired. And you really just want to zone out. And that game gives you the opportunity to zone out. Thanksgiving's so good because you're giving men the three things they want most in life. They can eat, they can drink, and they can watch television. On the fourth Thursday in November, a lot of fans tune into NFL football. A typical afternoon national broadcast draws around 18 million viewers now. In 2010, 31 million viewers tuned in on Thanksgiving to see the Cowboys play the Saints. Over the last 85 years, Thanksgiving Day has hosted over 150 NFL games. We've boiled them down to bring you our top 10 Thanksgiving moments of all time. Wow, so this must be a heck of a list. Hit me with some. The number 10 Thanksgiving moment of all time. The Bounty Bowl. Oh, geez. The Bounty Bowl. Love it. Jimmy Johnson, Buddy Ryan. That's a very memorable day around here. There's no doubt about it. When Jimmy Johnson's Cowboys and Buddy Ryan's Eagles faced off on Thanksgiving 1989, their rivalry grew to a whole new level. Luis and Dejas was, uh, had been Buddy's kicker before, and then Buddy cut him, and he got picked up by the Cowboys. Then Dejas gave up a Buddy secret, told the Cowboys, hey, Buddy Ryan used to put a bounty on kickers and punters. So when he heard that, it was the perfect storm. Word begins to spread that, you know, if uh, one of you guys on a kickoff want to lay out the little kicker there, might be a little something in the paycheck for you next week. At the start of the second half, Philly unleashed its new game plan. Get their kicker. Get their kicker. Jesse Small went off on this search and destroy mission and uh, flat Luis <laughs> Zendejas. Zendejas is down. I think he got knocked out. Wait a minute. You're going to go after somebody, and it's our Hispanic place kicker? Jimmy Johnson out on the field now talking with one of the officials. The Eagles sent someone after Sedeja. For them to go after the kicker, they picked on the run. Some fights, you have a fight in the schoolyard, and you pick out the biggest guy, and you go and you knock him in the mouth, and that's how you get respect. Boy, Merriman was knocked down by the five foot seven Maurice Jones Drew. They went the other way. They picked the little runt with the tape between his glasses and the pocket protector, and they smacked him to the ground. Well, Zendaya still doesn't have his bearings. As the game evolves, or de-evolves, there's a lot of fighting after that. There's a lot of pushing and shoving. I mean, you're watching that game, and you think, boy, these guys decided to not wait for the turkey. They're going to go out and, and get their flesh right now. I watch Gogan come back, man. Those both hands are pumping up. That was a free-for-all. Shut out the Cowboys, 27 to nothing. When the game ends, Jimmy Johnson, who's livid about losing the game and being embarrassed on national television, comes out on the field to look for Buddy to tell him what he thinks, and Buddy took off. Oh, I would have said something to Buddy, but he wouldn't stand on the field long enough. He put his big fat rear end into the dressing room. The one glove that Jimmy Johnson thinks that he's going to land on Buddy Ryan is making fun of him. And then Buddy Ryan made a better jerk. I resent that. I've been on a diet. I lost a couple of pounds, and <laughs> I thought I was looking good. <laughs> he won every single round on the judges' scorecard, including the making fun of Buddy Ryan round. 
Come and see the Cowgirls game against the Eagles. Here's Dallas's bounty right here. Then the Cowboys had to come to Philadelphia two weeks later. Unfortunately for them, immediately after a big snow. <laughs> Eagles fans who are drunk with snow, now you got a party. The classic shots of Jimmy Johnson trying to protect his head. We thought his hair might protect his head, but evidently it wasn't snowball proof. So why couldn't the Bounty Bowl carve out a higher spot on our list? To be really honest, I don't remember it was on Thanksgiving. I didn't realize it was on Thanksgiving until you told me. I don't know if I'd place it any higher than that. Funny, Philly fans remember our number 10 moment a little differently. Should be number one. If you're a Philadelphian, Bounty Bowl's number one. I, I love that game. I still remember that game. What says Thanksgiving more than hurling snowballs and getting super drunk? There's no bounty, we're going to kick the red. Eagles! Coming up. Find out who sent Dallas into a turkey day depression. Cowboy fans all over the country were just... Ugh. Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo almost made our list. I just can't tell you what a good job Tony Romo's doing. In just his fifth NFL start, Romo threw a career-high five touchdown passes as Dallas roasted Tampa Bay 38-10. Five touchdown passes for Hall of Famer Tony Romo. Cowboy fans probably enjoyed that big day more than the next one on our list. The number nine Thanksgiving moment of all time. Randy Moss cooks the Cowboys. I'm surprised this isn't higher, because we're talking about the coming out party for one of the great players of all time. He caught it! He's the best in the game! What a great catch by Randy Moss! The thing about Moss that year as a rookie in 98 was, it, it, was, like, it was like something new. They call me the freak, man. I'm going to call you the freak, because I'm a freak of nature. We'd all been watching football forever, we'd seen all these great receivers, I think mean, Jerry Rice was still somewhat in his prime. And then here comes this guy, who's like eight feet tall, and he can jump like 10 feet. I mean, it's like Superman. Deep in the end zone, punt! Super freak, touchdown! And he's literally impossible to defend. I told you, and I told you. Touchdown! On Thanksgiving Day 1998, Moss headed to Dallas to feast on the Cowboys. I remember very few catches and very big yards, and every time he did catch the ball, Something really, really big happened. Cleef Flicker, Cunningham, fires deep, got Moss, touchdown Vikings! It was an amazing one-man show. Randall Cunningham just chucks it deep to Randy Moss. I tell you what, you watch the rookie, and I don't know how you stop him. I don't either. Three catches, 163 yards, three touchdowns, video game numbers. Well, we playing today, you ain't got to worry about us. And each touchdown was spectacular. The most breathtaking touchdown of the three. I would say five Cowboys had an opportunity to track him down. There were about eight guys who had an angle on him, and he just went, Pew! and he was gone. Moss makes a tackle, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, hurry it down, 20. Oh, not touchdown, Viking. That was pure speed. Randy Moss in 1998 was faster than Randy Moss in any other season. And Randy Moss in any other season is faster than the rest of the NFL to begin with. Hi, Mom. Happy Thanksgiving. I remember doing the post-game show, and, and it was all about Randy Moss. And how did we not take Randy Moss? Well, you might remember, I mean, he never really forgave Jerry Jones for passing on him in the 1998 draft. He wanted to be a cowboy, and it was his dream to wear the star. When he slipped all the way down to the Vikings, the Vikings have selected wide receiver Randy Moss. He kind of made a promise to himself that he was going to make Jerry Jones pay. Yeah, you think Randy Moss wanted to get drafted by the Cowboys? Rookie of the year, Moss! Hey! Yes, the Cowboys passed on Randy Moss at 8. Somebody passed on him at 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18. Loads of people passed on Randy Moss because they thought he was a numbskull. <laughs> 
Yeah, Randy. Who is this? Mr. This, Madden? Yeah, this is John Madden. How yeah. you doing? You know anything about this turkey leg award? You just won it. Moss earned his turkey leg, but does he really deserve our number nine spot? Uh, it was so dominating, I think you would have to put that in the top ten. That's about right. It was only three catches. I mean, really, it wasn't that prolific of a day, right? It wasn't like 30 catches for 30 touchdowns. As far as I'll never forget that day at that stadium, the Randy Moss Thanksgiving performance is off the charts. I don't know. What have you got ahead of that? The number eight Thanksgiving moment of all time. Game day in Dallas and Detroit. Give me Lions. Give me Cowboys. I like it. It means Thanksgiving's here. What we recognize today is this tradition really started in Detroit in 1934 when the Lions' new owner, uh, George Richards, he was looking for a way to capture some of that high school and college spirit, particularly on Thanksgiving Day, which was already a tradition at those levels. The Green Bay Packers invade Brake Stadium for their annual Thanksgiving Day battle with the Lions. For over 30 years, Detroit had the only Turkey Day game in town. But in 1966, the NFL doubled the fun. Commissioner Roselle wanted another game, a late game. Nobody wanted to play it. Nobody wanted to play on a holiday. That was just unheard of. Who would watch a game on Thanksgiving Day? Who would go to a game on Thanksgiving Day? And then again, it was Tex Ram. Uh, yeah, we'll take it. And not only will we will take it, but we'll take it every Thanksgiving in perpetuity. The Cowboys stepped up to the plate when nobody else wanted the game. This is a big pet peeve of mine. I say it all the time. Get some new teams in there. I think it's cool. I think Lions Cowboys is the right way to go. It's tradition. No, what's the tradition? The tradition is we get Jerry Jones forcing America's team down our throat. As a Dallas hater, I love the fact that they're on Thanksgiving every day because I can root against them. And that pumps me up for Thanksgiving. Now, for Detroit, goodness gracious, I mean, you know you're going to be on national TV at least once. I would rather be run over by a New York City cab twice then watch the Lions one more time on Thanksgiving. The rest of America is kind of sick of seeing the sad sack Lions shuffle out of uh, Detroit losers again on Thanksgiving Day. You get turkey, you get cranberry, and you get a big fat heaping of Detroit failure. Everybody make sure they get a piece of this lion we have for Thanksgiving, baby. And I know a lot of people around the country don't quite get it. Well, why does Detroit have something? It's a tradition. Why change it? Tradition. Mission. It's awful. You end up feeling terrible about yourself. You're like, oh, the, the poor lions, they got smacked again. That's not an American holiday. You should feel good on Thanksgiving. You end up feeling bad for these poor saps. It's no secret that the Lions haven't had a lot to hang their hat on in a long time, and that game is important to fans in Detroit. The last time the Lions won was against the Christians in the Coliseum, if I'm not mistaken. Though the Lions have lost their last seven Thanksgiving matchups, they've served up some marquee players, like running backs Billy Sims and Barry Sanders. And Barry Sanders going off with the great runs. And love them or hate them, passion for the Dallas Cowboys runs deep. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Newman. I know it's tradition, Detroit and Dallas, but move it around a bit. I'd hate to see that. For the people in those cities, you see entire families at those games. Happy Thanksgiving, America! I think that's something the NFL should be proud of and try to perpetuate rather than move it around. Coming up, what blowout was compelling enough to land at number seven on our list? Way too low on the list. That was one of the great games ever. Memorable comebacks are sprinkled throughout NFL history. Jumbo Elliott! Your Bears have taken the lead. One of the greatest happened on Thanksgiving Day, 1965. Sonny Jurgensen led the Redskins to their most impressive victory. Jurgensen erased a 21-0 deficit by posting one of the most impressive performances of his Hall of Fame career. The ground camera shows Washington's jubilation. The Redskins move closer, 24 
Jurgensen finished with 411 yards, three passing touchdowns, and one rushing. And Jurgensen hits him with the winning touchdown. A dramatic comeback 34-31 victory is mirrored on the faces of a happy band of Redskins. But a sunny Thanksgiving couldn't top this next comeback. Number seven Thanksgiving moment of all time. Jason Garrett leads a comeback over the pack. If I'm Jason Garrett, like right now, and I'm coaching the Cowboys, I got to pull that tape out. Just so guys know, when times get tough, here's how you do it. The table was set for our number seven moment when Troy Aikman was questionable to play against the Packers in 1994. I remember coming out for pregame warm-up. Me and a couple of coaches were like, he's not playing, is he? And then Rodney Pete was supposed to play. I was out there watching pregame and it didn't look like Rodney was going to play. There's Rodney Pete, number nine, who injured his thumb last week. They're going to have to play Jason Garrett. We got a chance in this one. Basically, what we knew about Jason Garrett when he came in was he was apparently alive when the game started. What we knew was that he went to Princeton, so therefore we all assumed he was smart. Nice guy to have as your third string quarterback. He didn't really want him in for a big game against the Green Bay Packers. We just didn't know if he could play. It turns out he could play. But Garrett's first drive was like a fart at the dinner table. Pass Garrett picked off by Buckley. It was pretty ugly. It was pretty ugly. We didn't get into a great rhythm. One of my memories is Reggie White uh, having a huge impact on the game, and he kept being on top of me a lot and helping me up, saying, you're doing a good job. And I said, I think I'd be doing better if you weren't around. And there was pressure there by Reggie White. And then it got better in the second half. Dallas trailed 17-6 entering the third quarter. Then Jason Garrett made it look easier than pumpkin pie. That's a pretty good throw by Jason Garrett. That's a great throw by Jason Garrett. He did not have a big arm. And I remember being really surprised, thinking, wow, he's getting the ball down the field. I think it was on the advice of his wife. He said, just throw it high to Alvin Harper. And he did. Jason Garrett getting confidence as he goes along. We got a little energy going. Then we proceeded to score, I think, on the next five series. Our number seven Thanksgiving moment turned into a shootout as Garrett outgunned Brett Favre to complete the comeback. Deep to the middle. There's Irvin. Irvin's falling for five. In for the touchdown. When you throw for over 300 yards and only complete 15 passes, that's a heck of a football game. Jason Garrett led the Cowboys to 36 second-half points. That's the franchise record. Now think about that. Roger Staubach was Captain Comeback. He never did anything like that. Troy Aikman never did anything like that. What a day for Jason is this Garrett. A, is this a great game? It was great. It was huh? great. You know, we had some great Thanksgiving games in the backyard, which were somewhat legendary. But I, I think all in all, that was probably the best Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Number six Thanksgiving moment of all time. The Thanksgiving Day Massacre. 62 Packers, and remember, coming into this game, they're coming off their 1961 championship. Coaching the Packers has been an unequal thrill for Vince Lombardi, who has at his disposal perhaps the greatest football team ever assembled. Easily the most dominant team of, of the Lombardi era, probably the most dominant team since World War II. In 1962, they were undefeated and uh, heading towards a perfect season. They were, at that point, invincible. I mean, that's what you thought. Packers and the Lions fought it out uh, over a number of years, and the Lions were very good in the early 60s. And they had just lost earlier in that year to the Packers, 9-7, to which they felt, you know, should not have happened. In that previous meeting, Detroit blew a 7-6 lead with less than two minutes remaining. Ball's third field goal of the game is perfect, and it heals the victory for the Packers. Ever since that game in Green Bay that we lost, 9-7, to we were waiting for Thanksgiving Day. Of course, we'd forgotten the game five or six weeks before. They hadn't forgotten anything. It was like they'd come off the field 20 minutes since that other game, right? Detroit's defense shut down Hall of Fame running backs Paul Hornig and Jim Taylor, then focused on the Packers' passing attack. Roger Brown was all over the place. I think in that particular game, I had six sacks. For a national TV audience, the recurring image of our number six moment was Packers quarterback Bart Starr being pounded into creamed corn. With that defensive line they had, 
just devastated the Packer offensive line. They were so fast off the line, that the Packers just didn't know how to react. They sacked Bart Starr 11 times, once for a fumble that turned into a touchdown, and once for uh, uh, safety. In less than two and a half minutes, Detroit racked up 16 points, giving them a 23 to nothing halftime lead. Well, that, that's what did them in. Then they kind of said, oh, God, this is what, what time is it? Green Bay managed a pair of late touchdowns, but the Lions coasted to a 26-14 win, handing the eventual world champions their only loss of the season. People that know Lombardi said it's the maddest he's ever been. What the hell's going on out here? It was hard to understand how we could get beaten that badly. Detroit dismantled the Packers in that game that year. They were so motivated. Pure emotion, determination, let's kick their tails on national TV. That's how it happens. You know, when people say, you know, how did the Detroit Lions beat the Green Bay Packers that day? Maybe the question should be, why didn't the Detroit Lions beat the Green Bay Packers more often? When we return, how did a silver dollar become part of Thanksgiving lore? And it's still looked on as, what was that? We don't know. After Thursday night football. Before you overdose on tryptophan, let's recap the list so far. Number 10, Buddy's Big Fat Bounty. He put his big fat rear end into the dressing room. I resent that. I've been on a diet. I lost a couple of pounds. Number 9, Randy Moss destroys the boys. Three catches, 163 yards, three touchdowns, video game numbers. Hot! Super Freak touchdown! I'm a freak of nature. Number 8. White meat, dark meat, silver and blue. Give me lions, give me cowboys, it means Thanksgiving here. Last time the lions won was against the Christians in the Coliseum. Number seven, Jason Garrett Bondues the Cheeseheads. Nice guy to have as your third string quarterback. We just didn't know if he could play. It turns out he could play. Number six, Detroit Massacre's Green Bay. They sacked Bart Starr 11 times. And now the number five Thanksgiving moment of all time. O.J. Simpson's record day. Wow, you know, what a game. <laughs> the juice was loose. 273 yards, and it took almost 30 years to break that record. The thing I remember about the game was how unstoppable he was. Like, literally every time they gave him the ball, you know, he was going for like 25 yards. The numbers were amazing, and you could see them pile up and pile up, and really the game became about how many yards is O.J. Simpson going to, to rush for. Marangi to O.J., behind the block, rolls left, he's at the 35, the 40, the 45, and drops down at the 48. 200 yards for the Jews. He is going to break the record. It wasn't really a great game, and the Lions won it fairly easily. It was the difference between memorable and best, and one of the best games, no, not even close. But as far as memorable, as an iconic player like that, doing what he did, all those yards, it was, I mean, everybody remembers that game. 273 yards for any running back is impressive, but the way that the Juice did it was really remarkable. OJ's signature performance was even more impressive, considering his team was as worthless as a turkey's waddle. As good as OJ was, that year his coach, Lou Saban, quit. Jim Braxton, his fullback, was also out from the first week of the season. He lost his starting quarterback midway through the season. You have got to understand just how horrible the quarterbacking was for the Buffalo Bills that season. Gary Marenghi, he may be the worst quarterback to ever start more than two or three games in a season. With a sack of feathers at quarterback, the Bills relied solely on Simpson to gobble up much-needed yards. He was the only thing that, that the Bills had and the Lions knew that and still couldn't stop him. I mean, they know that they're going to keep giving the ball to him, so just, like, tackle him. It seemed like a very easy defensive adjustment, the tackle O.J. adjustment. Marangi to O.J., O.J. running to the left, turns the corner at the 30, O.J. at the 25, the 20, and falls ahead of the 15. That does it, he broke the record. O.J. Simpson, he just had a new National Football League record. The Lions really wasn't that bad a team. The Detroit Lions fans, every one of them standing up and cheering performance against the number one defensive unit in the National Football Conference. The electric company just turned on the juice. Juice, juice their hollerings. They wanted to carry it again. A delayed OJ up the middle of the 10, the 5, touchdown, the play! 
the number four Thanksgiving moment of all time. Bill Luckett's coin flip club. In 1998, the Lions and Steelers were locked in a Thanksgiving throwdown when a late field goal forced overtime. And we are tied at 16. That's when referee Phil Luckett became the ultimate Thanksgiving turkey. So now Phil Luckett is out at midfield for the coin toss. Heads, tails, tails, heads. Call it plays in the air. Heads is the call. He said heads, it is a tails. Now we saw the coin flip. Ref gives the ball to the Lions, and Jerome's going, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Oh, I believe he said tails. He did. What could be the problem? It was a darn coin flip. Why is, why is Jerome arguing? Look at Jerome Bettis. He's still, what's going on? Was there anything better than Bettis' expression? Bettis is like looking, what happened here? It's like someone stole his dog. Bettis is out there yelling at him. He said, I called tails. We had seen a lot of different things happen on the field. Nobody ever seen him screw up a coin toss. The coin toss? Now hold on a minute. How can the referee screw up a coin toss? It's a coin toss. Are you changing, you changing the head? Oh, Immediately I thought the Steelers got screwed. I thought Jerome made the right call. Lockett misheard him, gave the ball to the Lions. When you heard it played over and over, Jerome called like head tails. Head tails. I kind of sworn I heard head tails. Head tails. Head tails. I love that. Come on, head tails. What, what am I in fourth grade? You're gonna fool me with that? Everyone in the stadium heard it. Everybody on TV heard it. How can you not hear it? Hear it. Hear it. It's not that important. It's just who gets possession in a sudden death overtime. No big deal. So what's the big deal with getting the first overtime possession? They still have to play, right? After they moved the kickoffs back to the 30-yard line, the team that won the toss started winning about 60% of games. And that's what happened to the Steelers in that game. Norm Johnson kicked a short kickoff. Fair at the 14. The Lions took it back to the 35-yard line, 28-yard completion. Field goal range. Hanson for the game. The Lions win it 19 to 16. Phil Luckett had officiated a lot of games before that. You didn't think of his name, you didn't think of his face, and then all you thought about after that was bewilderment. It became such a big deal after that. We all started listening very closely, whether they called heads or tails. Luckett's coin flip was unforgettable, but does he really belong this high on our list? Was it a good game, or was it just memorable because he botched the coin toss? I'll be very honest, it's the only Thanksgiving Day game I can clearly remember. I think the problem is, there's that drug in the turkey that induces sleep. I don't think people remember anything about football on Thanksgiving unless we're reminded. So the coin toss is one thing that sticks out that you actually remember. I do think it deserves to be that high because we're still talking about it all these years later. A lot of times, great games, you really remember one moment. So Phil Luckett gave us that one moment. Up next, find out who made a spectacle of Thanksgiving football. Nice performance, lousy tasting glasses. If you didn't watch NFL Game Day highlights, in bowling, a turkey is better known as three straight strikes. In football, you can't score a strike, but players still like to practice their stroke. John Phillips will do that bowling ball roll. On Thanksgiving in 2004, Peyton Manning passed for two turkeys, or in football terms, six touchdowns in a lopsided carving of the Detroit Lions. Number 18's driving this machine, and he's driving it like I've never seen. Peyton with his second six-touchdown game of his career. Unbelievable. Leaving Peyton's performance off our list may have some crying foul, but wait until you see our next Turkey Day treat. The number three Thanksgiving moment of all time. Bob Greasy throws six TDs.
Bob Greasy threw six touchdown passes in a game? Six touchdown passes in a season? Bob Greasy? Sure it wasn't Brian Greasy? No, we checked. It wasn't Bob's son, Brian. Shockingly, it was indeed dear old dad. I never knew that until I walked into this room. You're talking about a guy who might not throw six passes in a game, much less six touchdown passes in a game. Bob Greasy came out firing. His passes were not exactly things of beauty. They didn't ask him to do much more than turn around and, and hand off to Zonka Kick and Mercury Morris. You know, you could have given me like 10 guesses and I would have never said Bob Greasy. Despite modest passing stats, Bob Greasy was a two-time Super Bowl champion and part of the Dolphins' perfect 1972 season. The Miami Dolphins are the champions of the pro football world. But by the late 70s, Miami had become mortal. In Miami, where weather forecasts are highly optimistic, predictions for the Dolphins were clouded by doubt. You know, the Dolphins at that point, 1977, were not the great Dolphins of yore. You know, we went up there, there were the big bad St. Louis Cardinals at the time. A reporter wrote an article saying that we were basically going to be Thanksgiving dinner because we only had Shula. On the top of the column was a picture of a turkey and his column was, uh, I don't know why these turkeys are going to St. Louis, they're going to get beat by the Cardinals anyway. I was a Dolphins fan, I remember that game. And the cool thing about that was it was against St. Louis, in St. Louis. And you forget that occasionally St. Louis did get a Thanksgiving Day game. And Greasy was wearing those big black horn-rimmed glasses under his helmet, I believe, that day. On Thanksgiving Day in St. Louis, Miami quarterback Bob Greasy did for eyeglasses what Clark Gable did for ears. He made them quite fashionable. It was very odd to see a football player on the field wearing glasses. Well, we used to call him Mr. Peabody, but... Uh... Bob Greasy uh, admitted at that point in time that he was legally blind in his right eye and began to wear glasses because he couldn't uh, wear the contacts. He said, the coach, i got to wear these glasses. That was a strange-looking deal for me to see him out there with glasses on under his helmet. I asked Greasy about that game. I don't like anything to do with the glasses, but, but Greasy said to me, he said, everything was just happening in slow motion. It was almost easy. Greasy speared Matt Moore in the end zone for a Miami touchdown. The game was a blowout before he even knew it. Greasy showed what a strong arm and a great receiver can do. That six touchdown performance was just unbelievable. He was so accurate, just making it happen. He was on fire. Greasy, first back going deep, he's in the open, he's got it, touchdown, Dolphins! Bob Greasy. Bob Greasy's a Hall of Famer, and a performance like that on a national stage did plenty to get him into the Hall. So if you're ever debating Bob Greasy's Hall of Fame credentials, just remember the following. Six touchdowns on Thanksgiving, two Super Bowl titles, and four eyes forever on display in Canton, Ohio. Nice performance, Bob. Lousy tasting glasses. After the break, is Snow to blame for our number two moment? There was such a blatant fumble, an absolute debauchery. It was a joke. This is me. And... While our list is a cornucopia of great Thanksgiving moments, not everyone can sit at the adults' table. One hard-to-swallow omission was Lawrence Taylor's interception return for a touchdown in 1982. The Lions were also seared by a late-game flare-up two years earlier. The Lions were winning that game 17-3 in the fourth quarter, and they tied it on the final play of the game on a quarterback sneak. Then we will go to overtime. Fielded by Williams at the five. Williams breaks out of the pack. Dave Williams. Touchdown, Chicago. They win it. The Bears' comeback win was dramatic, but couldn't top our next fantastic finish. The number two Thanksgiving moment of all time. Leon Letts. Uh, what was that anyway? Freaky. Just freaky. 
That was that was that was bad. That was bad. Watch what happens. It's Leon left. No. When people say Leon Lett, that's the first thing you think about. It may be the biggest gaffe in Cowboy history. It really may be. Long before Leon failed to let it go, Thanksgiving 1993 was already a strange one in Dallas. It's probably the worst field conditions ever for a football game at Texas Stadium. Chill factor around zero. Temperature on the field, 26 degrees. You're used to that if you're a Packers fan or a Bills fan, but not a Cowboys fan. The whole feel was surreal. We fought a, a very tough football game against Miami that day. I mean, there was a lot of sliding, but it was it was a fun game to play. Intercepted by Bill Bates! Until the end of the game. 15 seconds, here's Stojanovic. Miami's trying to kick a field goal, and if they make it, game's over. If they miss it, we win. The number two moment on our list kicked the stuffing out of the Cowboys. And it's blocked! It's blocked and rolling around at the 10 yard line! The game's over. We win a game, and I don't know the thought process. You're like, no, he's not gonna do. Oh, God. The clock continues to move as the ball rolls free and rolls free in the end zone. The Dolphins fall on top of it. Here came Leon Lett. Like he's on a toboggan after the football. Nobody would be stupid enough to go up and touch it there, would they? Yeah! Oh, oh, oh Leon Lett! Leon Lett! What is he doing? What the heck is going on here? So he get another shot. Here it is. Sets it down. Kick is up. It's good! And the Dolphins win the ball game. Yes, the Dolphins sir! win 16 of 14. Right. Holy Toledo! Then they do the shot of the sideline. And Jerry Jones is there. I swear to God, his chin fell to his knees. And it was like, oh, this is too good. Bring the turkey up. Let's have some more. It's time to celebrate again. That was a situation that he no doubt thought he would never, ever find himself in. Well, yes and no. Let first made a turkey of himself 10 months earlier in Super Bowl 27. He's always going to be remembered for the play on Thanksgiving Day and the play in the Super Bowl. Don Beebe caught him from behind and knocked it out of his hand. Oh, Leon! Hey, poor Leon. He always seemed to get in the wrong spot at the wrong time. See, these disasters in Cowboys history, I don't think should be in the top five. The Leon Leck game that's on this list has to be the most memorable one because you have never seen anything like it. That was funny. I think more than anything, that was funny. Thanksgiving Day is about the uh, great cowboy moments. That's a disaster. That, that should be back around eight or nine. Not Leon Lett. Oh, 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 my. Sometimes when I'm having a bad day, you know, and I need a little chuckle, I'll just replay that in my head. And I'll think, hmm, yep, Leon. <laughs> it still brings joy so many years later. Coming up, we chew the fat about the one-hit wonder who tops our list. We don't have the foggiest idea how this guy did it. This NFL season, get double... Hold your breath just a little longer. Before we reveal our number one Thanksgiving moment, let's recap the list so far. Number 10, Buddy Ryan pays up to take down the Cowboys. You're going to go after our Hispanic place kicker? I think he got knocked out. Number nine, Randy Moss steals the spotlight. It was an amazing one-man show. You watch the rookie, and I don't know how you stop him. Number eight, Dallas and Detroit spells Thanksgiving. This Dallas hater, I love that they're on Thanksgiving because I can root against them. Now, for Detroit, you know you're going to be on national TV at least once. Number seven, a third stringer cooks up a second half for the ages. Jason Garrett led the Cowboys to 36 second-half points. That's the franchise record. Number six, the Lions carve up Lombardi's best. Maybe the question should be, why didn't the Detroit Lions beat the Green Bay Packers more often? Number five, the juice is loose for a record 273 yards. And it took almost 30 years to break that record. A magnificent performance against the number one defensive unit in the National Football Conference. Number four, points off confusion in overtime. Nobody ever seen him screw up a coin toss. A coin toss? Number three, four eyes throw six TDs. Nice performance, Bob. 
lousy tasting glasses. Number two, Leon Lett flies into infamy. He always seemed to get in the wrong spot at the wrong time. It's Leon Lett! No! And now, the number one Thanksgiving moment of all time. Clint Longley shocks the stands. If there's ever an incredible NFL example of 15 minutes of fame, it's Clint Longley's. Every man has to have his day, and Clint Longley had his on Thanksgiving. Entering Thanksgiving 1974, Dallas was having a forgettable season, but arch rival Washington was fighting for home field advantage in the playoffs, and the Cowboys-Redskins rivalry was at a boiling point. Well, I mean, as a Redskin fan, George Allen was warm, nice. Don't worry about that, Mike. A little bit quirky. And uh, Landry was, I don't know, the devil, basically. Darren Talbert actually came out and said they were going to knock Roger out, and then they went ahead and did knock him out. Dallas fell behind 16-3, and in the third quarter, Roger Staubach's goose was cooked. Back then, when Roger Staubach went down, something was drastically uh, wrong in Dallas. Roger Staubach took every single play. Roger Staubach was a tough guy. Roger Staubach never came off the field. Without Roger, I mean, Roger was everything. But the only thing Dallas had left at quarterback was Clint Longley. And when he came in, it stunned everybody. And here he comes, the Mad Bomber. Clint Longley. Yeah, who the hell is Clint Longley? Clint Longley took over. A rookie from Abilene Christian with no previous professional experience. The Redskins probably never heard of the guy. I still have no idea who Clint Longley is. No one had heard of Clint Longley. You know, against someone like the Redskins, there's no chance they're going to win a game. Didn't even have time to pinch myself. You know, you just go on in there and start throwing. And this little-known quarterback started throwing bombs. And I think basically it was throw it deep and hope. He knew he had to take his puncher's chance, and Longley had a big, strong arm, and he was going to give him the chance to throw the ball downfield, and that's exactly what he did. You know, I felt like the time I was a gunfighter with a football. If there was somebody open, I could hit him. I think when he came in, the opponent let down, thinking, take walk now. Oh, yeah. When, you know, when Roger went out, it's like, yeah. As Longley started the comeback, and as you watched, you think, no, 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 no. I could watch the tape of that game, and I would bet against him on tape to do it. With 28 seconds remaining, Dallas trailed by six. Before you could say candy yams, Longley hit Drew Pearson with a 50-yard bomb. The touchdown completed the unthinkable comeback and landed Longley at the top of our list. That last touchdown to Drew Pearson was something that just came out of, of nowhere. It was incredible. And you know Drew Pearson was always good to make the clutch game. But from Clint Longley? Oh my goodness. From who? As for Clint Longley, even if he never completes another pass, they'll always remember the one he threw on Thanksgiving Day 1974. If that one game made me immortal, okay, but I, I mean, uh, I didn't mean for it to be that way. But Longley soon became as welcome in Dallas as sushi at Thanksgiving. Longley decided to start picking fights with Roger Staubach. We got in a little skirmish after practice one day, and a few days later he did something to me. He hit me from behind. And as a competitor, uh, I, I wanted to get him. I wanted to go after him. And he went looking to fight him. Roger Staubach. Roger Staubach, how can you make Roger Staubach that mad? I want to meet this guy. Bad career move. Bad career move to hit Staubach. He messed with the Redskins that day, but he found out later that you probably shouldn't mess with Roger. And next thing you know, they trade him away to San Diego. He's gone forever. So that was his moment in the sun. Well, thanks for the great moment. It was made for a great Thanksgiving. Uh, sure wish it had lasted a little longer. And don't hit Roger Staubach. <laughs> So that'll do it for this top 10 list. Oh, 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 no way. For real? Like any turkey day, there's bound to be disagreement. Bounty Ball for me was the number one Thanksgiving game. No, not even close. I wouldn't put it in the top 20. I resent that. Clint Longley's day should be number one. There's always something to complain about, even on Thanksgiving. All I ask for is green bean casserole about twice a year. Can't even get it.
But one thing we can all be thankful for is football on Thanksgiving. <laughs>